On behalf of the people of Church of the Atonement, welcome to online worship today. Atonement is an Episcopal church in the Anglo-Catholic tradition. For more than 130 years, we have served as a witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ in Chicago's beautiful Edgewater neighborhood and throughout the wider community. We are an active, visionary, and inclusive parish that serves God through daily prayer and worship, lifelong Christian learning, and outreach and social justice ministries. We invite you, whoever you are and wherever you are, to open your heart to hear God's message for you. We encourage you to participate fully in this online service by downloading the service bulletin using the link in the description below. As you watch and worship, may God's blessing be with you.
Send forth your spirit, O Lord. Alleluia. Christ our Lord. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord.
Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And the last days it will be, God, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. According to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Uh. 
Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, I have been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither know, sees him nor knows him. If you know him, because he abides with you, he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, though whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give it to you, give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today we feel the wind beneath our wings. Today the hidden fountain flows and plays. Today the church draws breath at last and sings, and every flame becomes a tongue of praise. This is the feast of fire, air and water, poured out and breathed and kindled into earth. The earth awakened, herself awakens to her maker and is translated out of death to birth. The right words come today in their right order, and every word spells freedom and release. Today, the gospel crosses every border. All tongues are loosened by the Prince of Peace. Today, the lost are found in his translation. 
whose mother tongue is love in every nation. This beautiful 21st century sonnet, simply known as Pentecost, emerged from the pen of Malcolm Geit, a poet turned priest, born in Nigeria to English expats. If you are not familiar with his poems that follow the church calendar, I commend them to you. They are food for the soul. It is a joy and a privilege to celebrate this feast of fire and air and water, and above all, understanding with you today, especially since my Pentecostal moment occurred right here in the pews of the Church of the Atonement sometime in the spring of 2007. Now, before any of the frozen chosen go running for the door <laughs> at the sound of Pentecostal moment, I assure you it was a thoroughly Anglican Catholic Pentecostal moment. <laughs> More about it momentarily. Sacred scripture tells us that after Jesus' ascension, devout Jews made their customary pilgrimage to Jerusalem to observe the festival of Shavuot. Shavuot is the Jewish commemoration of the giving of the law of Moses. In the weeks following Passover, leading up to Shavuot, this joyous celebration was marked by the bringing of the new grains of summer, the wheat harvest presented as a thank offering. Since Shavuot falls 50 days after the first Passover Seder, Greek speakers refer to the holiday as Pentecost. Now, during this already joyous festival of Shavuot in Jerusalem, the disciples of Jesus were gathered together in one place. And Luke tells us that the Spirit descended upon them and they began to speak in foreign tongues. The gathered crowds heard the racket. Some of them dismissed it as if it were one of those frat parties on the campus of a certain university, left over from the night before. But others listened a bit more carefully. And they were astonished because they had come from all over for this festival, each bringing with them their native tongues and customs. And yet they understood in their own vernacular that the Galileans gathered in that house were not partying, but they were praising God. Ready or not, the Spirit of God was crossing every border and widening the circle of fellowship on that 50th day after the resurrection, a day which also came to be known on the Christian calendar as Pentecost. Now to the cynical, Pentecost, much like the gospel itself, seems like a lovely fairy tale. Division and strife between peoples and nations seem a natural part of the human condition. I was told as much as a 20-something divinity student in Chicago when I wondered aloud why a certain church in another neighborhood bore so little reflection of the neighborhood it served. And over 50 years ago, Martin Luther King Jr. echoed Billy Graham's sentiment that 11 o'clock on Sunday morning is the most segregated hour in Christian America. So imagine my surprise when decades later, I showed up at a stately Anglo-Catholic parish church one morning between calls, dressed in plain clothes sometime in the spring of 2007. I ventured up to Ed Edgewater from Hyde Park out of a combination of weariness and curiosity. Curiosity, because there on the website was one of those quaint Easter photos of the Father Rector in his cassock with all the women in the parish wearing their Sunday Easter bonnets. Do you remember that? Now, what was new about that quaint photo was that the women were as colorful as their bonnets representing so many glorious, colorful varieties of humanity found in this neighborhood and in our fair city of Chicago. 
So I ventured up here from Hyde Park and I took my place in the pew on that side. A priest dressed in cassock approached and I braced myself for the usual greeting I receive in an Episcopal church when I'm not wearing my collar. Half whispered, oh, hello, um, welcome. Are you familiar with our customs? <laughs> but instead, the man in black greeted me with an unmistakably North Carolina draw. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I've never seen you here before. Welcome, what brings you here? I'm gonna sit right down here and you're gonna tell me your story. <laughs> As he returned to the sacristy, I heard a thick Japanese accent in front of me. It was the voice of the late Mr. Kikutani. Remember him? Behind me strode in Nigerians in their colorful garb, and behind them, the unmistakable sounds of Mexican Spanish, then the Queen's English, then the Scottish brogue. Looking back, I spied the dear usher at the door, who was everybody's mother a purveyor of colorful language in her own right. In time, I anointed Marge in the hospital just before she died. Then suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, like the sound of shackles being released. And lo, the house was filled with smoke, and I knew I was in a Catholic church. Catholic, not merely because of the smells and bells, but in the Joycean sense of that word. Here comes everybody. They came because the Spirit called them here. I came back next Sunday wearing my collar and at the rector's invitation volunteered at the altar here for over seven years. I returned here simply because no one said I couldn't. The Spirit moved, as it always does, just as it moved over the face of the deep at the beginning of God's creation. And through the decades, this stately parish church at the corner of Kenmore and Ardmore has welcomed people of many tongues and nations. They felt welcome not merely because of what people did or how they did it, and God knows you've always done it beautifully. But mostly, I think, because of what people did not do. When the Spirit moved, no one stood in the way. Our city maintains the marks of intentional segregation. Read the history of Chicago if you doubt it. Our churches reflect the patterns of this city. And we can remember not so long ago when laws are on the books to keep people from mixing and mingling and, God forbid, marrying. What happens when the winds of change blow? What happens when the spirit moves and the walls crumble and we just get out of the way? The spirit moves just as it moved on the face of the deep and God breathed life into dust. When the Spirit moves, God's people exhale in reply in songs of praise and words of prayer. Prayer. Prayer, said the Anglican turned Jesuit Gerard Manley Hopkins. Prayer, the church's banquet, angel's age. God's breath in man returning to his birth. The soul in paraphrase, heart in pilgrimage. The Christian plummet sounding heaven and earth. Engine against the almighty, sinner's tower, reverse thunder, Christ's side piercing spear. The six days world, transposing in an hour a kind of tune, which all things hear and fear softness and peace and joy and love and bliss, exalted manna, gladness of the best, heaven in ordinary, man well dressed, 
the Milky Way, the bird of paradise, church bells beyond the stars heard. The soul's blood, the land of spices, something understood. Something understood. How is it they cried at Pentecost? That we hear them speaking in our own language. Just listen and get out of the way. My friends, let us renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lord. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. There we go. Can everyone hear me? Okay, now it's too loud. I'm Catherine Worthington, and I am a member of the Endowment Guild. And yesterday we held an event that I wanted to share with all of you. Um, the event is designed to bring together community, information, and support. We had a number of speakers from our own parish and from the community. All the information is available on the site, but we also have it um, available next door at the coffee hour, so I wanted to invite everyone over to coffee hour. Um, we also have our lovely uh, Legacy Society pins for those of you who have included the uh, Church of the Atonement in your estate plans. They were designed by Rick Vellon, so thank him, they're beautiful. Uh, so please come by and grab one if uh, you have included the church in your plans. And we just wanted to give our gratitude and appreciation to everyone at the church and everyone who participates uh, in the Endowment Guild uh, and invite you over to a lovely coffee hour with all kinds of goodies. So thank you. Have a great one. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, I'm Barbara Newman from Vestry. Uh, great to look out over the sea of red, uh, and even if you're not wearing red, I know that the fire is in your heart. Uh, a few announcements. Wednesday evening at 7 will be the final choral evensong before summer break, uh, so please consider joining us for this beautiful worship, uh, for our glorious choirs. Uh, this time, no COVID, fingers crossed. We will be preparing our monthly meal for the women of Sarah's Circle in our kitchen here beginning this Thursday at 2. If you've never considered this opportunity for outreach, first timers are welcome. No special kitchen skills are necessary. You'll be shown all that you need to know. Uh, finally, uh, it's a joy to welcome Father Morris back to the altar and the pulpit. Um, we hope to see him many more times. Uh, our regular schedule of masses continues throughout the week. On Tuesday, June 14th, uh, our regular noon mass will be celebrated by our assisting bishop, Chilton Knudsen, so a good time to get to know her. Uh, we remain grateful to all of our assisting clergy uh, and the sense of continuity they've given us during this time of transition. Thank you all for your presence today.
from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing.
We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might be found by you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your promise, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent his Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, you we bless, bless you, you, we give, give thanks, thanks to you, and, and we, we pray, pray to you, Lord, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may be one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light, and grant that we may find our inheritance with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, with Gregory and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord.
through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. This day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the holy angels guard and protect you. May blessed Mary and all the saints pray for you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Rejoice and be glad over Mary, alleluia. Let's pray. O God, who by the resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, didst vouchsafe to give gladness unto the world, grant, we beseech thee, that we, being hoping by the Virgin Mary, his mother, may attain unto the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. 